I want to see how you um, decode something that Jeannie Buss tweeted. Uh, this is Sunday night, right? It was before uh, 4th of July. And she said this on Twitter about 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time, uh, p.m. I miss KB, and that obviously is referencing Kobe Bryant. He would understand and explain everything that I'm not allowed to. Honestly, he was the greatest Laker ever. He understood team over self, meaning your rewards would come if you valued team goals over your own, then everything would fall into place. <laughs> all can reply. Uh, since all can reply, I'd like you to. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know what she's saying. I think, what time did you say that was? <laughs> it was, uh, well, it was it was 2 a.m. Eastern, so um, it's about 11 o'clock yeah. or a little after 11 o'clock was Pacific. It, was it red wine or white wine <laughs> or tequila or what was it it's being poured something. that at midnight? That yeah, that definitely right? sounds emotional. <laughs> yeah, it's got some emotion to it, a little bit of like, you know, the filter was off at this point. But I also believe that there's a lot of truth in these moments. And all right, I'll tell you what. I'll well, tell you, you what I'm reading. Great, what, ha what happens in this situation, I, and the way that I look at it, is she's saying when she can go to great players to get an answer for things that she may be struggling with, right. which is the way to finish this deal off in the offseason, who to bring in, who to sign, who to lean on to give her – the confidence to pull the trigger on a player or something or trade trades or draft picks or whatever. And she probably could go to Kobe. Her dad probably could have gone to magic, that sort of stuff. And I think for her, she doesn't have that there now because her relationship with the one guy in LeBron James isn't nearly as strong as it was with Kobe Bryant. And together. LeBron is in a different situation because he's still dealing with Rich Paul, who's his, agent and and the clutch and all that sort of stuff so she's trying to figure out how to keep them at bay but still try to manage the team and have success and do what they want to do but to do it the right way i think that's what i'm reading through it well i i think there's a lot yeah th that's what i'm seeing as well because what i see from her in this tweet is somebody who and you remember the article or the interview she did with the LA times with Bill Plasky a couple of weeks ago, I think when the season ended and she revealed how there's a lot of pressure on her because she's the final decision maker, yeah. but she takes input from a lot of people and yeah. she admitted, you know, whether it's like, you know, one, make sure you, you got to do things to keep LeBron happy. Cause he's so important to them. And then it's, you know, Rob Palenka, the GM. And then of course there's the Rambuses. Then there's Phil, who she also said, yeah, she talks to Phil. And I wonder if this is a result of that and how the Kyrie story that's out there about how LeBron reportedly wants the Lakers to trade for him. And maybe she's hearing from other people, look what happened in Brooklyn. Are you sure you want to bring a guy like that into this organization? And she could lean on Kobe and say, what do I do here? What do you think? And Kobe would probably give her that reassurance of, don't worry, I'll handle it, or the perspective that she desperately needs in a moment like this, who can I trust? I, I, feel, I really feel bad for Jeannie. I do think that she is in a situation where she tries to get people to give her as much advice and input as possible, but everyone has, as you know in these situations, Key, everybody's got their own side that they want you to, like, you know, their own Self agenda. Self-interest. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. And so I think I, I felt like this was like a, a moment of desperation of I don't even know who to trust about this. And I'm worried if I pull the trigger on this, will I regret it? And if I don't, will I regret it? Here's why. Because as Brian Windhorst explains, LeBron James watching everything right now. And in August, it's time for him to decide his future with the Lakers. Would he sign an extension? So with the Kyrie trade kind of hanging over this franchise, Here's Wendy kind of explaining how LeBron can use some leverage. The one thing that is a that is a potential change agent here, LeBron James wants Kyrie Irving. And it's not because he wants Kyrie Irving because he's the best teammate in his history. He wants Kyrie Irving because the Lakers can get him. He doesn't have a whole lot of choice. And he knows that he's got a contract extension situation coming up. And that's the change agent. If there's no deal by early August when LeBron can extend, will LeBron use that as a leveraging point to force the Lakers? If I were the Nets, I might be hoping so. Think about that for a minute. LeBron well, if, using leverage. What do you think of that? It, look. Getting Kyrie is an easy one for me 
what Jeannie has to come to grips with is the self-interest is only in LeBron James. It's, it, nobody else you should pay attention to. Because everybody else, the, the Rambuses and Phil Jackson and all them, put them aside. I understand the relationship. I understand the relationship with Linda. I understand the relationship with Kurt Rambis. I understand all that. But put that aside, okay, because it's your team, not their team. And the guy on your team who's the best in the world, you might want to listen to in terms of going and getting Kyrie. If he says that's what he wants, then go do it. And if you don't do it, now you force him to say, do I want to still be a Laker? Now I got to take a chance on the, my reputation. So if I don't sign the extension, this thing can blow up not only on the Lakers, but also on LeBron James from a fan base standpoint because the fans will then turn on him in a whole nother way. I've seen it happen many times over with Laker fans here in L.A. about certain players and the way that they would view disrespecting the franchise, so to speak, by not – I saw it happen with Dwight Howard, not the same player no. as as LeBron James, but Dwight Howard was supposed to be. And then he came here for a year – and he was supposed, they went and did all this stuff and put all the the murals up and signs all over the state, and he decided to go to another team. And so he's but LeBron's got to be careful with that as well. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.